Oh my god, Wolvie. Can you believe this? Tony is actually going to review our movie. Isn't that exciting? Shut the fuck up, Bob. Or I will make your ass bleed like Kool-Aid. Just calm down there, buddy. Why don't we just go relax and listen to the Greatest Showman soundtrack? <clears throat> everybody no you are not hallucinating no you are not dreaming it is indeed 22 tiger dude here AK Tony I am actually doing my first movie review for a new release since 2020 with Sonic the Hedgehog that's the last time I reviewed a new release how crazy is that I am here to do a movie review for dead and Wolverine and this review will also have no spoilers so if you have somehow not seen the movie yet don't worry not gonna spoil anything Deadpool and Wolverine is directed by Sean Levy it stars Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, and Emma Corrin. So Deadpool and Wolverine is about when Wade Wilson is past his Deadpool days, but the TVA gets Deadpool out of retirement to have a place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and he teams up with Wolverine to go ahead and stop a threat that I will not spoil. So Deadpool Wolverine is a movie I have been very, very excited for, like with many people. Of course, at first I had my worries because, you know, Disney bought Fox, but thankfully the spot dropped during the Super Bowl and ever since Super Bowl day earlier this year, my worries have completely went away. When it comes to Deadpool movies, I'm not really a fan of the first one at all. I just feel like it's very rushed personally, but Deadpool 2 I think is so much fun. I think it's a dang good movie. The fact that this is Sean Levy's third time working with Ryan Reynolds after Free Guy and The Adam Project is really cool. And Hugh Jackman coming back as Wolverine has been very, is very cool as well. And I even actually marathoned all the X-Men movies uh, leading up to this movie. And now that I've seen Deadpool and Wolverine, how was it? Was this movie as entertaining as I was hoping it would be? Yeah, this was a fun time. I honestly did enjoy this movie. I thought this movie honestly did a good job of making jokes surprisingly at the Marvel Cinematic Universe. The fact that Kevin Feige was even willing to let Ryan Reynolds just take a jab at the Marvel Cinematic Universe is seriously commendable. It's actually like crazy how much they actually get away with. And I know even Sean Levy and Ryan Reynolds in interviews have said the same thing, that they are shocked with what they were able to get away with. And it does a good job of feeling like a love letter to 20th Century Fox, which it's very unfortunate that Disney had to buy them. I'm still to this day not very happy that happened. I think they should still be around as a studio, but it does do a good job of feeling like a love letter to that studio. There was no denying that uh, Fox really left a legacy with that franchise. The first X-Men, I think a lot of people forget, is what really catapulted these comic book movies that we have today. So we have to thank any comic book movie for giving us the movies we are getting now. It really is owed to that first X-Men movie. When it comes to the performances, Ryan Reynolds is really good as Deadpool. He is still in top form as this character. He has not lost a beat. All of these movies, Ryan Reynolds has been really good at. He was funny. He brought some nice emotional moments to the character as well. And he, as always, just really did a good job. Hugh Jackman as Wolverine has not lost a step at all. He is terrific in this movie truly utterly terrific in my opinion he is the best performance in deadpool wolverine because the 
drama, the tragedy that he brings to that character, unbelievable. And it was also just nice to see Hugh Jackman have so much fun playing this character because I know this character really means a lot to him. So it was just so nice to see him back in the suit. And this movie does do a good job of not ruining the ending of Logan. What happened with Logan, that was that. And this movie addresses it. And I thought how the movie addressed it, in my opinion, was funny. I know some will feel different about it, understandably, but I didn't feel that it ruined Logan in any shape or form. Emma Corrin also does a good job of playing the villain that I cannot really talk about because they did a good job of keeping her secretive, but I thought she personally did a good job as far as how the performance goes. And I can't really give away anything else, but I thought the cameos, the performances for the specific cameos were all good. And I thought a lot of them did a very good job of bringing purpose into the story. And I actually appreciate that they took the time to do that. But the cameos, in my opinion, were utilized very well. Sean Levy's direction with the action sequences, it was an absolute treat. I thought Sean Levy really captured captured the violence really well. There's some really good camera work. Maybe this one might be the most violent of the Deadpool movies. I don't know how many of you would agree or disagree with that. You can let me know in the comments, but I think they really utilize the R rating here. That's another thing I gotta give Kevin Feige props for. Respect to him for not having them watered down Deadpool. They went full R rated with this thing and boy, they definitely took advantage. For what the writers had to do, I know Ryan Reynolds is one of the writers with this movie. I thought they did a good job with how they did the multiverse. You could tell that this is a movie that was just made with love and care. And I thought the writers did a good job of just having a ball with this aspect of the movie. And I thought the writing was good when it came to the relationship between Deadpool and Wolverine, because even though there is a lot of funny banter between those two, I also did like that there was even some dramatic weight between those two as well. The drama isn't anything super, super insanely deep, but I do think when it was there, in my opinion, I liked it a lot. I also had fun with the soundtrack in this movie. The needle drops, oh my goodness. So many of them were absolutely glorious. And just hearing them in the movie brought a smile to my face. Of course, it's already memed up to death on the internet, but them using Bye 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 in that opening sequence was just pure, bliss and i just want to comment because it's in the marketing madonna's like a prayer how that song was used in the movie chef's kiss to that now when it comes to my issues with deadpool and wolverine i mentioned earlier how emma corrin did a good job playing the villain and i did think she did a good job the character, however, I did feel was underwritten, and I don't think she's necessarily a bad villain. Uh, I do think she's better than some of the other weaker MCU villains we've had, but I do think there could have been more to her. She does a few neat things with her fingers, but aside from that, I didn't think there was anything particularly special about this villain and I wish they could have developed her more. I do think sometimes the visuals in the movie aren't the greatest. They're not absolutely horrible, but I do think there's some green screen that could have, that could have been polished a little more. And I did say how I thought the action was well filmed by Sean Levy. And for the most part, I do think it is, but I do think there are times where the camera work is a little shaky and certain shots are 
too close to where I couldn't really see what was going on at times. Thankfully, not a lot of the time. Um, I still think it's an absolute treat for sure, but I do think there's moments where it could have been just a little bit improved. When it comes to the comedy of the movie, it's really funny a lot of the times. I really did enjoy the humor. I think I forgot to really mention that in my pros, but yeah, I do think it's overall a funny movie. There were a lot of good gags here, but I do think there were moments where the humor did really fall flat. I do think the first act of the movie after the amazing opening sequence is rocky. I wasn't really laughing that much. It had a few jokes where I chuckled, but it was really missing that funny factor for me. And I was honestly getting worried I wasn't going to really like this movie because I did think the first act, it was just not funny to me. But thankfully, after the first act, the humor did start to pick up more. Of course, still moments where the humor can fall flat from time to time, but I did think there were at least more hits than there were misses by that point moving forward. And lastly, this is actually my biggest issue with the movie, and I feel like a lot of people aren't really mentioning it. I was really, really, really disappointed by the utilization of the side characters in the other Deadpool movies. Colossus only had maybe one or two lines, and I love Colossus. He's a blessed character. Even the first Deadpool, I don't like the first Deadpool, but I still love Colossus in that first Deadpool movie. So it was just so disappointing that Colossus really did not have a lot here. Dopender, barely in this too, kind of more in the background. Um, Negasonic Teenage Warhead and her girlfriend, not in here that much. And Vanessa, for someone that Deadpool says is very important to her and he's doing the things that he's doing for her, she could have had more of an importance, I think feel like. Blind Al is blessed. I do really enjoy Blind Al. Peter, of course, is a joy. I love Peter, but I was disappointed that everyone else really were little cameos. And I knew they weren't going to have huge screen time going in anyways, but come on. Also, I have to mention very quick, I am so disappointed they didn't bring back Cable, and I'm actually more disappointed that Domino wasn't even brought back to this. Domino, who I thought was so good in Deadpool 2, loved the character, and Zazie Beetz was great as a character. I couldn't believe they didn't bring her back, and not even mention, I don't even recall a moment where they even mentioned Domino. Overall, Deadpool and Wolverine, I think, is a really fun time. I thought it delivered on the cameos, I thought it had a good buddy story between Deadpool and Wolverine. There were a lot of very funny moments. I thought the action sequences by Sean Levy were very well directed. They utilized the R rating very well. Like I said, probably the most violent of the Deadpool movies and I'm glad Kevin Feige allowed the creative freedom to give us this third and most likely what is a final chapter for the Deadpool movies. And not just a goodbye to Deadpool movies, but also a farewell to the 20th Century Fox X-Men universe. The end credits, without saying anything, I thought was beautiful. Definitely felt like the perfect farewell to that era. Even without all the cameos, um, I think on its own, it's still just a very fun buddy story. I'm going to give Deadpool and Wolverine three out of four stars. So everybody in the comments down below, let me know what did you think about Deadpool and Wolverine and how would you rank the entire X-Men franchise. If you want to know my ranking, I'll post a screenshot right here. I did my entire ranking on Letterboxd. 
Um, and by the way, speaking of Letterbox, if you want to follow me, please do because that's where you could keep up with all of my movie activity on there. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss when I do upload something. And of course, very quick, everyone, I want to say thank you to those that did take the time to watch my movie. Valentine's Day King Takes the Last Graham Cracker. It was such a joy to finally get that made and I appreciate those that did take the time to watch it. So everyone, this is 22 Tiger Dude here. Here, and don't forget that I will always have tiger power.